there's no doubt about it that the audition experience really begins from the moment you enter the room. I think decisions sometimes are made before actors even start talking. And there is a subtlety of command that an individual has when they enter a room. You have to have an awareness, almost an extra sensory development of the walls of that room. How, do, how does that space speak to you? a command of that space. And I really emphasize the word subtlety because it's not an overbearing quality. It needs to be in a light, it needs to be a light, engaging quality that kind of oozes a feeling of, ooh, this might be interesting to watch. And it has a subtle confidence that we just sort of are drawn to. And with that, it's, uh, it's that command and majesty over what you're going to do with your audition and making a very be a strong beeline with that audition and knowing when the audition is over that you just exit because so many actors, you know, they want to feel a little interaction. They want to start talking. There's a little bit of nervousness. We're not there to make friends. We're there to know who's going to get the part. And if you leave that feeling of wanting more, then the only way I can get more is to invite you back. So you gotta like almost exit a beat early and feel great about what you did. And then that leaves a little residue. And for, for me, the only way I can capture that back is to call you back. I think sometimes when actors underperform, they actually know it fairly instantaneously. And um, a less experienced actor will keep going because that's the theater training. Okay, don't stop, keep going. And then they leave the room thinking, oh, I wish I could have done it again. So I like to give a message to actors that if you instantaneously feel within the first 20, 25 seconds of auditioning, this isn't going well, then I would stop. I would stop and say, you know what? I'm going to start again. And then just take it from there. Start again. Don't ask. Say, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, would it be okay if I start again? Don't ask. Take command. Because if something goes wrong, you usually feel it pretty much right away. So simply say, I'm going to start again. If you leave the audition and then you realize it didn't go very well, sometimes you can have your manager call. Sometimes you can have your manager call and maybe, maybe get you a second chance. It's certainly worth a try. I mean, all they can say is no. There are times when I have had an actor come back and they blew the doors off of it. And I was excited that I actually gave them that chance. Other than that, if it didn't go well and you think, oh, that casting director's never gonna see me again, I think in six months, I would be open to seeing that actor again, especially if they're really right for a lot of the things that I do. I want to be open to somebody growing in this business, and I know it's an investment. So I, I want to be very, very cool about it and have a, a lot of humility about it, and that's my course of action. I really like actors who come in with an extremely strong choice. That shows me that they're not afraid. That shows me that they have a strong point of view about the material. I like actors who've developed a sense within that almost makes them director proof. I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't wanna complain about directors, but typically if they've come through film school, their training has been in the visual art not in the performing art. Maybe they've had a little bit of acting class, but generally they're not well versed in speaking with actors. So directors feel more confident with actors who are very self-directed. They're like, yay, I don't have to give them much direction. They'll save time on the set. I'll get less takes because they know exactly what to do. So if you bring a strong sense of um, a point of view and strong decisions, it shows me how confident you are in your training, in your ability. And if it's not right, at least I'll know that I can gauge you and then give you a direction to have you go a different way. If you're just sort of in the middle or asking my advice about a direction or say, hey, I can do it any way you want me to, it makes me feel like you're not specific enough. 
I want you to be specific. I want you to be in charge of your ability. If an actor is interested in training with me, you can go to joeypauljensen.com. Um, also, joeypaul.com. I do teach regularly in Burbank. I also uh, produce and direct a comedy show that's stand-up comedy for young actors at the Hollywood Improv, which is heavily attended by industry, and it helps uh, actors write their own material to become stand-up comedians and learn how to command the stage so that someday, just like comedians who did get their own sitcom, I think it's a great way to develop yourself as a comedic talent. I think you can always write to me at Raleigh Studios, Manhattan Beach, 1600 Rosecrans, at uh, BME there, or also um, you can write to me at joeypaul.com. I'm really good about it. I answer emails. I do look at reels from time to time. Um, so yeah, or um, I don't know, come see my show at the Improv if you want and let me know when you're doing a show. I want to take a moment and introduce you to my mom. My mom works in my casting office. Maybe you guys even know her if you've auditioned for me. She signs in actors, and it's the greatest thing ever because it makes actors feel like my mom is here to give me that extra push. So my mom signs in actors in my office. She is my rock of Gibraltar, as is my husband, because he's there for me. But my mom's here today, so I would love to introduce you to her because uh, she's kind of like everybody's mom in an audition. Mom, come on in. Stand right next to you. Come right in for your tight two shot. <laughs> okay, say hi. <laughs> hi. This is my mom. She's everybody's mom when you come and audition for me.